Chapter 4. Trouble is just another event. You, don't you dare move. Holding Amelia's neck with one hand, and a knife in his free one, was the escort adventurer, who was maintaining his weapon just until now. Damn, taking a hostage at this timing, you're their accomplice? Zack. S how tis. I'd drop your weapons quickly, adventurer. Taking a child hostage, a disgrace to men, aren't you, Zack? Shut up, winning is what matters. If you don't drop em fast, I ain't responsible for what happens to this Ju Chan, adventurer. Zack vexingly dropped the sword that was at his hip, so I decided to follow suit. Observing while removing the weapon, I see Amelia just grimacing in displeasure, it doesn't seem like he's strangling her. There's a bag with water in her hands, so it looks like he aimed for when she tried to hand it to me. Dropped it. Quickly let the child go, Zack? Not yet. Tell the brat outside to drop it as well, adventurer. If it was the usual Royce, he would rush the carriage with no questions asked, but I open hollow corner bracket call close hollow corner bracket, ed him to stand by, so he's still guarding outside. There's still time until the guys, whose presences I felt come here, so I guess let's go with some information gathering in the meantime. Uh. You Oni Sans are adventurers, right? Serious? What, can't you tell by looking, adventurer? I mean, though adventurers are strong people, they are afraid of a child with a weapon, so I thought maybe I'm wrong, serious. This brat, you, cover my back. Ignore the one outside, adventurer. He moved one free man to guard his back, and there's only one looking at us. Yeah, he got fooled so fast it's funny. Anyway, I was able to prevent disarming Royce. What's your goal? If it's money, I can give you all the luggage, just let the children off, Zack. Ooh, you're chivalrous one, aren't you Zack San? A merchant giving priority to us over the luggage, you know how to please a man. Ha, huh, don't matter if we just rob everything. These brats are dressed quite nicely, should sell well as slaves, adventurer. Hearing the word slave, Amelia's face goes pale. Probably her old trauma coming back, her body's shaking, showing dangerous symptoms. Should I just shoot him? No, bit of a drastic measure, but guess I'll try make her overcome it. Amelia, listen well, serious. Ye, s. Amelia. You been squeaking for a while now brat. Shut up, adventurer. You've become strong. Remember your days of training, serious. The guy's screaming, but I ignore him, and continue talking to Amelia. Told to remember, Amelia closed her eyes, and after a few seconds when she slowly opened them, traces of fear were gone. Remembered? You can now easily take down a guy like that. So do it without restraint, serious. Yes, Amelia. The moment the man was disturbed by the loud voice coming from the hostage, Amelia slipped out of the arm holding her, took the hand with the knife, and using essentials of Aki, made it drop. It would be fine to separate at that point, but she didn't end it there. The only one who can touch me, is Sirius Sama. Amelia. Continuing on with essentials of Coe Nagi, she flung the man. Together with the man who was standing behind, the two adventurers flew out of the carriage. Ha! Huh. The guy just flew, Dadi? Zack? Leaving aside Zack, whose mouth was agape, I went over to Amelia and stroked her head. She was breathing heavily, but calmed down while I was stroking her, and showed me her smile. Serious Sama? I, did it, Amelia. Yeah, you did well. You're no longer a weak child, just waiting to become a slave. You proved that now, Serious. Thanks to Sirius Sama, Amelia. Wrong, thanks to your efforts. Now then, there's still some enemies left, Sirius. Yes, Amelia? Amelia withdrew behind me, and I patted Zack's shoulder while picking up the equipment. Zack San, are you alright? Sirius? A, hey, ah. Uh, Donna, what is this child? Zack. Explanations will have to wait. 
For now let's get out of the carriage and get ready to fight. Enemies are about to appear, serious. No, aren't there just a few of them? Wouldn't running instead of fighting, Zack? With a carriage full of luggage, we won't outrun them. So let's quickly get outside and intercept them, serious. I'm not bragging, but I'm not too good with the sword. Depends on the opponent, but more than two at the time is impossible, Zack. Not a problem. As long as you can protect yourself, Royce and Amelia will finish the rest, serious. I shift my gaze to Amelia, and her face is full of motivation, almost spelling out, leave it to me. Fumu, seems she's back to normal. Anyway, let's get outside. We can't see enemies from here, and what's more, the goods will get damaged, won't they? Serious. Ooh, I guess, Zack. Not really decisive attitude, but with us going outside, Zack followed suit. Aniki, Nei Chan, you're okay? Royce. Right after going out of the carriage, the loyal dog ha, dot not that, Royce runs up, so I calm him down with some pats on the head. Looking at the thrown out adventurers, they were about to get up while all shaky, presumably from a quite strong impact. Aniki, what's up with them? Enemies? Royce? Yeah. Fools who tried to sell Amelia and you as slaves. Clean them up without reservations, together with the ones about to come, serious. They what? I'ma beat them down, Royce. Letting out a growl that is probably that is probably the remains of the transformation, he furiously scowled at the adventurers. Ones being glared at are as much enraged, though. Shish shit, what is that brat? Adventurer. I don't really get it, but she's strong. Are they not here yet? Adventurer too? Looks like are being cautious even if it's a kid, and decided to wait for incoming reinforcements instead of facing us. That kind of situational judgment is as expected of an adventurer, I guess. What do we do, Donna? Wouldn't it be better to beat them down before other guys come? Zack? Too late for that. We're back to square one for now, serious. I can feel their presences even without open hollow corner bracket search close hollow corner bracket. I can feel their presences even without open Blocking the front and back, blocking the front and back of the highway, dangerous looking guys gather one after another. The adventurers go to the leader like man's side, and start reporting the situation. Oi oi oi, what's going on? Weren't you guys supposed to rob them of their weapons? Leader like? Shut up, they are stronger than we thought. If you let your guard down cause they're kids, you'll get done in, adventurer. Blaming brats for your own mistakes, pathetic. Oi, you, go, leader like. Leader like gives an order to his comrades, and one man starts nonchalantly walking towards us. The man stops in front of Royce, and threatens us by glaring. What can I say, extremely easy to tell thug. Oi brats. Drop your weapons, pronto. Otherwise you're in for some pain, bandit one. Hey, are you guys bandits? Royce? Yeah, bandits. The appreciated mister. Bandits, that are going to sell you for a high price, bandit one. I see. Then I'm not holding back, Royce. Ah? Uh, what are habu, bandit one? Royce fist goes into opponent's face, and the bandit, without even getting to understand the situation, flies away. The man continues to roll while gouging out the ground, and passes out while bleeding out of his nose right before leader likes feet. Royce, continue to rush them, Amelia, accompany the ones in the front of the carriage, serious. The number of enemies, not counting the one punched just now, is ten. Six at the carriage's backside, three at the front. The remaining. Serious Sama, what of the one above? Amelia and one in the tree at the left hand of the back side. Probably for long distance attack with the bow, but at the point they prepared only one, it's useless. I pick up a palm sized stone at my feet. I'll drop him down. Now then, are you ready? Serious? 
Royce silently lowers his center of gravity, Amelia draws out her knife and heightens her concentration. And I throw the stone stone, aiming for the guy in the tree, to get ball rolling. Open combat, serious. Yes, Amelia, Royce. The same moment the man that was hiding in the hits the ground, Royce kicks off the ground running. Royce, unlike Amelia, fights with me or Lior, and gets beat up, almost every day. Usually one would call it quits, but similar to Lior he likes to fight strong opponents, so he joyfully continues to challenge us. Repeated actual combat on top of his nature, so trauma from slavery in him is non-existent. His first time cutting down people, however, against clear-cut enemies that aim for his sister or me, there's no mercy. Dashing with the force that is kicking up earth, he easily cuts off the arms of the two vanguards, and with the same momentum jumps to leader-like side. Th this, leader-like. Ura, Royce. While bewildered, leader-like reacts, and swings down the greatsword he held, Royce also cuts upwards. With a high-pitched metallic sound both swords break right in the middle, and Royce gets away from there while smacking his lips. Damn it, I'm still far away, Royce. True, even if the opponent had a great sword with a massive blade and he a cheap, thin iron sword, Lior would still cut down only the opponent's weapon. Simultaneous is already at sufficient level, but Royce ideal is high and big, so he's frustrated for real. Didn't I tell you? Oi we'll hold him down, you aim for that black-haired kid, adventurer. That kid is their leader. If we take him hostage, this one should stop as well, adventurer too. Don't you lay your hands on Aniki, Royce. The two adventurers teamed up and are handling Royce attacks. I taught him some empty-handed combat, however only to the level of, might as well, so it lacks decisiveness, and Royce is being held down by the two. Leader-like takes out his spare sword and approaches, but Zack stands as if covering me and holds up his sword can't be only relying on children. I'm not letting you get to this child, Zack. Move, lowly merchant, leader-like. The spirit is wonderful, but by my estimation Zack is the one lower in abilities. Zack is a good guy, I don't want him to get hurt, can't be helped. If you think I can't fight, just because I'm a merchant, think again, Zack. Think you can win against a profibu, leader-like. Leader like suddenly falls on his back, slugged back of his head and stopped moving. I feel bad for Zack who has stiffened up with his sword over him, but I had myself ended immediately. Nothing much, I just hooked open hollow corner bracket string close hollow corner bracket up to opponent's leg and pulled it at full strength. Dorasha, Royce. By that time Royce uppercut caught the adventurer's jaw. The blow strong enough to lift off the ground, reliably reaps away his consciousness, the other one is already down on the mat, unmoving. If there was a gong it would be grandly ringing right now. Sorry, Aniki. I couldn't hold one down, Royce. Don't worry about it. You took almost all of them by yourself, it's enough of an accomplishment, serious. Un. Ha. Huh? Is there no better sword, Royce? What's unfortunate, is that there's no sword to match Roy's abilities. He swung a sword he picked up from a bandit a few times while shaking his head, and reluctantly puts it into sheath. This is surprising, Royce is amazing. I've never seen a person this strong at this age, Zack. I've a lot to learn. Aniki is even more amazing, Royce. Ha, ha, Donna is, ha. Huh. Wait, where's Amelia Chan? Zack. Should be ending it about now, see, speak of the devil, Royce. When I shift my eyes to front side of the carriage, I see Amelia magnificently dancing. Unlike Royce, her attacks are weak. If she used magic they wouldn't, but it's too powerful to be used in fights against people, so she holds off on it. An untacked fully released windblade, could turn it into a dismemberment murder in a blink of an eye, and I've told them to not kill if possible, so she's not using it this time. Even so, with her trained out reflexes and speed, 
even against three opponents, she leads them by the nose, slashing at vitals with her knife, if there's an opening. On top of that she's using magic to blow Tailwind onto herself, speeding up even more. The bandits, whose wounds get increased every time Amelia's silver hair draws a glittering trail, are already tearing up. WH what is she? Man 1. Even though I can see, I can't even graze her. What the goo? Man 2. Ooh uh. Get away, get away, Man 3. Though without heavy wounds, engraved with countless light ones, their will to fight is almost gone. Finding an appropriate time Amelia halts and states while pointing her knife. I am going to go for the throat next. However, if you drop your weapons and surrender, I shall stop. How about it? Amelia. UN, that smile after thrashing them thoroughly, cute yet scary. To top it off she is a kid so it's probably even scarier, because the three bandits obediently dropped their weapons and surrendered. Serious Sama, it is over, Amelia. Good work. Let's tie their hands and get them in one place, Serious. Understood. Zack San, do you have something to tie with? Amelia? A, ah. I believe there was in the carriage, Zack. I'll help too, Royce. While the bandit trio is being tied up, the last one showed up. Not like I forgot about him, he just didn't come no matter how much time passed, so I just left him be, but why is he appearing at this timing? One asketh, talkest one's mana as offering, and realizeth the avatar of great fire, bandit. Incantation. Not good, he's a magician, Zack. Aniki, Royce. Sirius Sama, Amelia. Magician. It denotes one who can use magic above certain level, commonly, ones who can use intermediate level magic, are called this way. We didn't think that a bandit would be a magician and distanced ourselves from him, so apart from me the three it was too late to deal with. I see, he was hiding because he was waiting for me to be isolated. Spear of flame, pierceth one's sworn enemy, open hollow corner bracket fire lance close hollow corner bracket, Magician. Spear of flame, pierceth one's sworn enemy, open hollow corner bracket fire lance close hollow corner bracket, magician. Spear of When the man chants the spell name, a big lance, about my height, appeared. Fumu, first time I see a magic user apart my servants, so that's two steps above elementary level open hollow corner bracket fire lance close hollow corner bracket, huh. Magician man is glaring at me who's admiring, and while crooking his mouth, fired the fire lance. Kilo Vair. Leader of monsters, magician. Oi, even though they are cute pupils that got strong due to their own efforts, cruelly calling them monsters. Open hollow corner bracket impact close hollow open hollow corner bracket impact close hollow open hollow corner bracket impact close hollow open Since Zack is looking, I since Zack is looking, I decided to finish it not with gun, but normal magic. The open hollow corner bracket impact close hollow corner bracket. I fired as small, from the looks of it, not something that could oppose a fire lance. However, the moment the ball of magic got absorbed into the flame, and it dispersed, as if the flame exploded, and the fire lance vanished. Wah, my magic, magician. Your mana focusing is still too inadequate. At that level, you'll get offsetted by small magic like just now. Well, if there is a next time, though, serious. The magician is stepping back from grinning me, but I can't let you off. You have a criminal record of slandering my disciples, so I need to do some educational guidance. While I was walking, thinking about the details of the guidance, two shadows flew past me. How dare you, Emilia, Royce. The enraged siblings run up to the man at full strength, and split up to take his both flanks. Aim for serious Sama, Aniki, Emilia, Royce. Amelia into the abdomen, Royce into the face, he gets pounded from both sides. 
As one would expect from a brother and sister, the timing was perfect, and the man drops while spewing blood and vomit from his face. From the way he collapsed without even taking a step after being punched from left and right, you can see the height of the pair's technique. More like, that was quite a blunt sound, he's not dead, is he? Nay Chan, looks like this guy is still alive? Do we finish it, Royce? Let's make him regret he survived. Royce, we're doing that, Amelia. Wait, wait. That, the hell is that? Scratch that, their eyes are serious. Even though the man is passed out, Royce is still shaking him while holding on the scruff, and Amelia is looking with cold eyes while holding her knife. Not good, by the looks of it, they'll really do it. Amelia, Royce. House, serious. Yes, Amelia, Royce. I stoked the heads of the two that came before me and calmed them down for a moment. I have questions for those guys, and though I get this feeling of overkill, they all are out of commission, so it should be enough at this point. How should I put it, I have no words to describe this, Zack. Leaving the explanations to the confused Zack for later, first are the disciples. You did well guys. There were a lot of unexpected things, but you adapted yourselves appropriately. It's proof that you overcame harsh training, serious. Really, Amelia? I did it, Royce. One thing though, when I was attacked you guys overreacted. You won't be able to make calm decisions, if you are like that. Serious. It was fine because he flinched at me countering his magic when did it, but if there was one more calm opponent, they might have fallen prey to magic before getting close. Serious Sama was aimed at. As if I could be calm, Amelia. Guys aiming at Aniki are enemies. I'm taking down all of them, Royce. You guys, I'm glad you feel that way, but change the order of thoughts. If you want to something about the opponent, firstly you have to prioritize calmly incapacitating him. After that you can hit him with your wrath or whatever, right? Serious. Understood. We should incapacitate, and then make them regret living, Amelia. I see, so we do it thoroughly afterwards, Royce. These kids, aren't they a bit extreme? Zack. I can't deny Zack's words. But we were targeted for no reason, so it's reasonable that we retaliate. After that, I decided to gather them in one place and interrogate. Bandits and adventurers were working together, after all. There's a liability issue with Adventurers Guild that sent them as escorts, and I need to have them spill the beans on the bandits' scale. After giving the ones in most danger minimal amount of treatment, and having dispatched a messenger bird to City Amist, Zack was interrogating the leader like man. Oi! Are you guys the bandits that were roaming around here recently? Zack. So what of it? Leader like. I'll have you spit out everything about your size and hideout. Due to you guys our business has been seriously stagnating, Zack. Like I care, leader like. Even now? Zack. Zack threatens the leader like with a sword on his neck, but the man was just looking up at Zack while laughing. Ha ha ha. Do it if you will. If I die you'll be left with as much information as you have. A lowly merchant shouldn't do something he's not used to, leader like. KH, Zack. Seems like he hit a bull's eye, as Zack was putting away the sword while being frustrated. Though looks like he recovered right away, and started talking to the adventurers this time. Aren't you guys embarrassed? Taking kids hostages, on top of joining hands with bandits? I'm surprised people call you adventurers brave, Zack. I don't want to hear that from a merchant saved by some kids, adventurer. I don't want to hear it from a guy rolling around with ropes on him. You guys, what do you want to do going against the guild and pairing up with bandits? Zack. Shut up. A company created by some adventurer wannabe don't be act an all great, adventurer. What? How dare you diss Aniki, Zack? Stop, stoop, serious. It's becoming just a fight, so forcefully cut in and make them stop. 
Coming down after getting away from the adventurer, Zack was scratching his head out of embarrassment. I apologize, Donna. I couldn't stand having Aniki made fun of, Zack. I know that feeling really well, Royce. Since you're a merchant, try to handle it a bit calmer. That said, we still don't know anything. Sorry, I acted shamefully. You see, the bandits have been only after the merchants lately, Zack. Isn't that because the merchants have more money? Serious? Even so there are no victims among the travelers. Since they calmly attack guarded carriages, Aniki thinks there's something behind the scenes. If we could just get some proof from these guys, Zack. But because you're inept at interrogation, you're at a standstill, since you gain no information. Frankly, we can just go to Elysian, there's no need to get involved with these guys. However, they did prattle something about selling us as slaves on top of involving the unrelated us into this. I think I'll help a bit while harassing these guys. Zack. Can I interrogate these guys? Serious? Eh? I don't mind really, Zack. Thanks. Sorry, but I'll be using a bit of merchandise from the carriage, Serious. After getting some red paint used for dyeing from the carriage, I was standing in front of the leader of the bandits. What does a brat that drags around something like subhumans with him want? Leader like. Ignoring him saying something annoying, I draw a circle with the paint on his arm and write, Idiot, in Japanese in it. From my point of view, it's just some bad mouthing, but for them, who don't know Japanese, it must look like some mysterious pattern. All right, it's done, serious. Scribbling nonchalantly, I'll definitely make you regret it, leader-like. You'll be the one regretting. Also, this isn't a scribble, but a cursed, serious. Hua? What the hell are you talking about, leader-like? The leader has an expression of displeasure on his face, but I give the arm with the pattern a strong pinch. The leader makes an expression of wonder, but while I gradually put in more strength, almost as if to rip it out, his face turns pale. WH what is this? What the hell's going on? Leader like. Next I take out a knife and lightly cut the surface of the pinched part. It bleeds, of course, but even though it's a minor injury, the man started trembling. Oi, what's wrong with you? Is this a wound to be so afraid of, really? Serious? Not that. It doesn't hurt. Even though it was pinched so much, even though it bleeds, it doesn't hurt at all, leader-like. Lastly, I stab the knife deeper. Lots of blood spurts out, and the man starts screaming while sweating. WH what is this? You guys, is my arm really attached? There's no pain or sensation of it, leader-like. Didn't I tell you, it's a curse, serious. For now, I only stop the bleeding, and look into the leader's eyes while smiling. What's reflected there is confusion, and slight fear. In this impossible situation, my smile must look quite eerie. I study curses as a hobby. And, though this was completed just a few days ago, if you pour in some mana into the drawn pattern, dot the sensation of being touched let alone pain, disappears, serious. WH what are you talking about? Leader-like. But you see, if you lie to me, or don't answer to my questions, the curse will get stronger, and eventually will spread through the whole body, serious. He ha ha, if there's no pain, there's no point in torturing then, leader-like. Don't you get it? Losing sensations means that you won't be able to taste anything you eat, even if you hold a woman, you won't be able to feel a thing, is what it means, serious. At those words the leader's composure disappears. He must have imagined it, even if for a moment, since his body started shaking even more. Da Donna. Isn't that a bit much, Zack? Oops, looks like I scared even the one I didn't need to. But Amelia immediately whispered to him, so I don't need to explain. Honestly, this is an application of active regeneration, I just temporarily numbed the sensation of pain by giving excess stimulus with mana. 
In other words, it's just like putting on some anesthetic, it'll go back to normal in half a day. Point is, there are other ways to threaten, not just with a sword or a beating. For them who don't know about anesthesia, the current situation must be nothing short of horror. When it spreads through the whole body, it becomes impossible erase, you know. Well then, can I start asking some questions? Serious? I'll tell you anything, young master, leader like. Chuckle, too easy. Well, one would become obedient after getting his two the strongest human desires restrained. The leader without hesitation, fluently talks about their secrets, even including information that no one cares about. After doing the same treatment to the adventurers, I got to know the reason they joined hands with bandits. It was those guys after all. Damn, I did think they were good for nothings, but to think they would go this far? Zack. Turns out, the bandits hunted down merchants because of orders from another company, that was jealous of Galgan Company's development. To crush the rapidly developing Galgan Company, they used bandits by leaking them the information about transporting. Seems they also had them assault some unrelated companies, to cover their tracks. The two adventurers belonged to a proper guild, it seems, but lately it didn't go well and they couldn't earn decent money. Then comes in the aforementioned company and strikes a deal with them to cooperate with bandits in exchange for a large sum. The weapons they were maintaining in the carriage seemed to be provided, thinking that with good-looking weapons they would be easier to trust. That's why even though those guys only know how to use a single-handed swords had those brand new weapons they aren't used to. H hey, that's enough right? I said everything there's to say, so please erase this curse, leader-like. Yeah, I will, but before that, serious. I gathered the attention of the bandits, picked up a palm-sized rock that was laying around, and broke it with a grip that was enhanced with open hollow corner bracket boost close hollow corner bracket. I smiled at them, showing it was broken so thoroughly it became almost only sand. Next time you call my disciples monsters or insult them, this will be your heads. Got it? Serious? The bandits nodded their heads so much vigor, you would think they would rip off. A monster should be said to an opponent who is in a whole other dimension, not something you should spew out in desperation, just because one's a little stronger than you. According to the bandits' wishes, I wiped off the pattern with a cloth and circulate mana to become light to erase the curse, or at least a performance like that. Really, I just activated open hollow corner bracket light close hollow corner bracket and made it shine, but on the men's faces relax, thinking the curse was erased. Ah, by the way the air some side effects, so this won't disappear for half a day. Also, the curse isn't completely gone, so please don't try to make some weird moves against me. I might carelessly reactivate it, serious. They turn pale again, but there's no problem if they don't get involved with me. Anyway, they are going to jail to await trial, but I believe they learned their lesson. After that, while waiting for the city guards to take over the bandits, I was receiving countless apologies from Zack. I am truly sorry. To get into this kind of predicament, when I said I'd guarantee a safe journey, I have no excuse, Zack. No. No, our baggage is safe, and we don't mind it a bit, serious. There's no need to speak politely. While this might sound rude, when I heard about it from Aniki, I half doubted it, but after seeing your strength with my own eyes, I really admire you. From now on please let me call you Donna in the true meaning of the word, Zack. What do you mean true meaning? Anyway, I'll take it as a sign that I was truly approved. Zack keeps apologizing, but for us this isn't a big deal, more like, it was just an event that served well for Amelia to conquer her trauma. That said, what shall we do? Since even if we keep on moving, sun will go down shortly, so shall we return to town together with the city guards that are coming to take these guys? Zack? There's no need to go back, is there? Serious? 
However, putting me aside, you haven't really slept outside much, right? Zack? Not a problem, rather, we are quite good at sleeping outside. Also since you're delivering goods, wouldn't it be better to arrive on schedule? Sirius? We don't really mind, so let's move on, like Sirius Sama says, Emilia. Donna, sorry. We couldn't cover much distance today, but since two adventurers worth of luggage is gone, our speed should pick up, Zack. Well then, let's go with moving forward, Sirius. The same time we stand up after deciding our course of action, Royce, who was on lookout, started to make a racket. Anarchy. There's smell of people from that sidey, Royce. Looks like city guards have arrived. To dispatch six guards to this place, even though it's quite far from town, looks like Galgan Company is an organization that has some trust. By the time Zack was done explaining the situation and the bandits were taken away by the guards, an hour has passed. We, like decided, were riding towards Elysian. Speed did increase a bit, but it became evening soon, so we started to prepare camp. I'll be outside to look out for the night, so you guys sleep inside the carriage, Zack. Shouldn't we all keep watch in turns? Sirius? It'll be fine even if Sirius Sama doesn't. Please leave it to us, Amelia. Rejected. Except for unexpected situations, everyone should do it equally. This is also an experience, Sirius. If you say so. But Sirius Sama's turn will be shorter, Amelia. Donna, are you really a child? I feel like I'm the childish one close corner bracket, Zack. Aniki can't be understood with logic, Royce. With a bit of trouble the turn for watch was decided, next is preparing the meal. Usually food in camps is mainly made up of easy to preserve hard bread and dried meat with some soup with seasonings like salt. Preserved foods aren't really developed so there's only that much. However, this isn't a desert or a place covered in ice, but a highway you can see a forest from. And so, Amelia, go gathering, Royce, go randomly hunt one down, Sirius. Understood. I'll go look for some herbs and such, Amelia. All right, Aniki. A mid-sized should be enough, Royce. Seeing me taking out a pot. That is a little on the big side and putting water to boil on a handcrafted magic circle while giving orders to the two, Zack remained standing while holding bread and dried meat. Uh, I prepared your portions as well, but doesn't seem like you need it, Zack. Sorry, I should have told you, we'd do it, serious. Don't mention it. Well then, I'll be going to rest first after eating this, Zack. I stopped Zack, who was taking out a sleeping bag while nibbling on some unappetizing bread. Wait a bit, at any rate, you'd rather eat something warm, right? Even if you don't eat that, I'll make Zack's portion too, so please wait, serious. To get a meal prepared on top of getting my life and goods saved, how should ever I repay this debt? Zack. The whole thing with bandits just happened to be, no need to mind it, though. Anyway, about the meal, I'm also experimenting, so I would also like to know a merchant's opinion, serious. Experiment, is it? If it's Donna, I have an interest in it, so I would like to, Zack. After seeing Zack fold his sleeping bag and sit on the opposite side, I took a light brown block from my bag. I cut an appropriate amount of this clay-like thing, that I made at home, into pieces, and put it inside hot water to melt. When the clear water turns to the same color as the clay-like, a fragrant smell started drifting around. Appearance and usage is like that of miso, but this isn't miso. Think of it as soup base made from this world's ingredients. Ooh, what is this tasty smell? Is it what you put in just now? Zack? It's a thing made out of salt and various spices mixed and kneaded together, since it's dried a bit it's easy to preserve. You melt in hot water like this to eat, serious. If you dry it completely it would last even longer, but since that knocks off the flavor, and this isn't a long trip, I made it into this mid-dried clay-like. 
Zack is looking full of interest, so teared a bit of it and handed it to him. This is, W.H., it's spicy, Zack. Oi, oi. It's made to be dissolved in water, so of course it's spicy if you eat it raw. You're doing the same thing Royce did in the past. Serious Sama, we are back, Amelia. I hunted it down, Aniki, Royce. That's when the pair comes back and shows their results. Amelia gathered herbs I might be able to use for deodorization, mushrooms, and some edible wild grass, while Royce got a mid-sized bird that looks worth eating. Incredible, it's a borrow bird. These birds are very cautious and hard to get near to. I'm amazed you could catch one close corner bracket, Zack. It ran away a few times, but I quietly got close to it, then jumped out with a bang and cut it with a swoosh, Royce. I don't really get it, but I get that it's incredible, Zack. Royce is the type that moves relying on mainly on instincts, so it's useless to ask him for an accurate explanation. I believe Zack made the right choice. Anyway, after preparing the bird and burying everything apart parts we'll eat, I scattered salt and herbs for deodorization and made it into a yakitori. Next, I mix in mushrooms and wild grasses into the soup, and after putting in dried homemade noodles, it's finished. In relation to dried noodles, they are a simple thing made by frying the made noodles in oil, but it's still way better when compared to hard bread used for storing. Seems Zack could hide his surprise at the finished meal that was better quality than he expected. Looks like his switch was flipped on after apprehensively taking a mouthful of the noodle soup. He's the only one eating with a fork so it looks hard to eat noodles, but he's eating the finished meal so intensely, as if pouring it down. After subjugating it in a blink of an eye, Zack was rubbing his stomach in satisfaction. Yeah, this is really incredible. This is my first time eating something this good while camping, Zack. I think Dee and the others are eating the same thing right about now, serious. Then Aniki's eyes are probably sparkling. This thing that dissolves and dried noodles, was it? This is revolution of preserved foods, it would definitely sell. Would you like to try selling it through the company? Zack. I don't really mind, but if you want to make and sell it, do it after getting a permission from D and consulting with Gad, Sirius. It's the opposite, Sirius Sama. Yeah, if it's D Ni, then he'll definitely say, get a permission from Sirius Sama, Royce. Probably. As for me, I'd like to him to say that he made it and get a bit famous, but since he's not before me, convincing him doesn't seem possible. Can't be helped, I suppose I'll permit it with some conditions. I don't mind teaching you how to make it, but only if you give me a part of the sales, serious. How much is that part, Zack? I don't know how it will sell, so decided after consulting with Gad, serious. I believe it will definitely sell, this is a chance to earn massive amount of money. No matter how you look at it, you're being too irresponsible with this, Zack. At this point I don't really have a fixation on money, and thinking about that kind of thing is troublesome. Also it looks like I could trust you and Gad, so I leave it to your discretion, serious. It hasn't been long since we met, but I think Gad, who's associated with that D for a long time, and Zack who tried to save us from bandits, are good guys. Also, I have a favor to ask. Our abilities that you saw today, I want you to not tell anyone, serious. I can understand that. That kind of strength should be hidden for a while, Zack. You understand that? Serious? Of course. If there are such strong children, they'll get sold a fight by some troublesome bunch or nobles will try to take them in, nothing but troubles, Zack. As expected of a merchant, he understands the problems I've been concerned about. As such, I will keep quiet. What's more I got my life saved, so I'll support you, no matter what the nobles say, Zack. Thanks, Sirius. I should be the one saying that. By the way you will be enrolling at Elysian School, right? Zack. Did I talk about it? Sirius? 
No, it said that children head to Elysian mostly to enroll, so deducing it's simple, Zack. Fumu, that was a blind spot. Oh well, if it's just us going to school, there's no problem, even if it's known. Deducing it is fine, but is there something with us going to school? Serious? Actually, our Galgan company has a branch at Elysian, so I wanted to recommend visiting our store. I'll be coming there frequently like this time, so if at any point you have any requests, we could stock up on it, Zach. Oh my, he's developing quite a spirit for business. But this is exactly what I need right now. I can now directly deal with them for those spices I used to get through D. Looks like I won't need to reduce my repertoire even after arriving at Elysian. Please take care of us from now on as well, Zach. Ah. Same here, Sirius. Afterwards our journey went on smoothly. We beat down the monsters that attacked a few times, however no bandits appeared hereafter. Even if they are weak, seeing the two's performance of repelling monsters before he even has a chance to draw the sword, the only adult member, Zack, was getting depressed. Even though I'm the adult, I'm the one being escorted, Zack. It's a sad truth, so I patted his back without saying anything. While experiencing these kind of small events, after five days passed, we finally arrived at our destination. Dana. Elysian has come into view, Zack. Ooh. It's huge, Royce. It is big, Amelia. Academy City, Elysian. What greeted us was, the giant white bulwark that protects the people.